Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. I got another Master Duel video for you. It's Monday, which means it's once again time for one of our weekly viewer specials. For those of you who might be new to the series or channel overall, uh, I wanted to go ahead and uh, give you a little bit of insight here as to what the viewer special is all about. But before I do that, uh, I gotta give a quick shout out, which I keep forgetting to do. Uh, it's for myself here. Uh, it's for my second YouTube channel. Uh, go ahead and check that out. Link in the description below there is going to be my second YouTube channel. If you're interested in seeing stream VODs uh, of Master Duel streams or uh, my other streams like Final Fantasy Friday, uh, you'll definitely want to go ahead and check it out. But especially if you're interested in more Master Duel gameplay because the entirety of the VODs will be uploaded to YouTube there. Hexlex Plays is going to be the name of that channel linked below. Um, also, I, if I've not already uploaded the first episode of it, we'll be recently uploading uh, myself playing the Pokemon TCG Game Boy game Blind, so definitely tune in for that as well there. But anyway, uh, the viewer special, for those who might not be in the know, uh, once a week, usually on Mondays, we take a look at duels from you all, the viewers. So uh, this is nice because it allows us to kind of like come together once a week as a community, just in general, which is always fun to do that. And uh, we get to see more duelists play, more decks that I might not not necessarily play uh, here on the channel. So it's good to have that insight, multiple insights from multiple players, multiple perspectives, and again, decks that we might not normally see uh, because I don't have them. And I think, if I recall correctly from what I wrote down here, I think that's actually going to be the case for all three games we're going to see today are decks that I uh, don't play here on the channel because I don't have them built. So. Um, definitely a good opportunity for that. Uh, if you would like to submit games for the viewer special, then you can do so by leaving just a few bits of information. Your nine digit player ID is going to be the main one I need. That way I can look up your profile and see any publicly saved replays you have. Please do make sure they are saved publicly. If they are not, I am not able to view them. Uh, moreover, uh, you'll also want to leave, if you have multiple replays saved especially, um, the specific game you want me to see. So that can be like you can leave the date and time of it or your opponent's name or something like that. Um, if you want to also leave a little bit of a blurb about how the duel went, you can say like I played this deck versus this deck or you can talk about the game itself. That is also fairly helpful. But I do watch almost every single game that does get submitted. So uh, even if you don't get featured, I very likely did watch your duel. Uh, as far as where to submit this information, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and click the description below and follow the invite link to my Discord. Uh, there I have a whole channel for viewer special submissions. But more than that, uh, you can also come hang out, talk with all of us on the Discord. I think there's like 400 people on the Discord right now, which is insane. Uh, that's a lot. And it's a very friendly, chill place. So definitely come uh, hang out and chat about the game with us there. Uh, for some good vibes, but uh, if you're not on Discord or you don't want to, that's also completely fine. You can leave that info in the comment section of this video too, and I'll go ahead and take a look at that as well. But let's go ahead and see some of these duels that we have for today's special, this week's special rather. All right, first duel for this week's special comes to us from Adelon. Adelon, very active on the Discord over there, I believe has submitted to the viewer special before. We're going to see Adlon playing Armed Dragon, which this deck did get a new wave of support, I think even relatively recently. Like, I think this came out... Didn't this stuff come out within the release of Master Duel? Like, in... I don't know, but... Um, not only just, like, regular Armed Dragon, though, but it's going to be Buster Blader Armed Dragon, specifically. You can see we have the Buster Whelp here, as well as the Cashier Unicorn, and a couple of Armed Dragon cards, so... Let's see how this ends up playing out. I do know that a lot of the time, uh, the Armed Dragon deck can actually make some pretty scary Tomahawk Auroradon boards. Uh, as you can see, the deck has a fair amount of level 7 monsters, uh, and also has access to the Kashira engine as well. Looks like we banished a Shadal Construct. Uh, we are up against Bestial Shadal, I believe, is our uh, opponent's deck here, so... Yep, there it is, the Pile Armed Dragon coming down next to the Cashier Unicorn, and as I mentioned before, this allows us to go into the Tomahawk. Tomahawk will detach you and does end up resolving, so we do get a field full of Battle Eagle tokens. We we're going to link off two of the monsters, one of the tokens in our Tomahawk, in order to summon Protector Whelp of the Destruction Swordsman. Wow, the link materials are literally any two monsters? It's kind of wild. 
So we special summon the Buster Blader monster from hand that lets us add the trap card. Now we're going to Sprite Elf. And I imagine this here is the Aurora Dawn. Okay, so it looks like we're going to be done Link Summoning after this, because you can't do that after you summon these tokens. So we are now pivoting into, I imagine, Synchro plays moving forward. Yep, here is the Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion. Is this going to be Excel Synchro then? No, it's Hyper Librarian. Wow. I actually haven't looked at the extra deck yet. Usually I do that. We have another Tomahawk in there. That's cute. There's the Buster Dragon as well. We do have Excel Synchro in the extra deck as well as Cupid Pitch. That's cool. Oh, here it is. Here's the Excel Synchron. Hyper Librarian drawing us Fenrir. Okay, and then we get to dump off the Jet Synchron. Now we get to Sync for 10. Yep, this will be the Baron de Fleur. So we get to see another draw from Hyper Librarian. Hyper Librarian in the past has facilitated a lot of long Synchro combos and does not seem that a lot of things have necessarily changed here as we are continuing to draw yet even more cards off of the Hyper Librarian. Oh, and it's mandatory, so you get to actually chain block it with the Cuban Pitch. That's interesting. Okay. Yep, here now is the Borload Savage Dragon, our second Omni Negate, and the Cuban Pitch. Since we have Colossus in our extra deck, I imagine this grabs the Nemesis Corridor here? Yes, there it is. Nemesis Corridor, putting back the Jet Synchron, and can then get sacked off for the Thunder Dragon Colossus. That alongside the Baron's gonna get Target Protection, and now we have Surge Protection. Oh my god, wait a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What does this do? We're activating the Prologue of the Destruction Swordsman. Send a Destruction Sword card and a Buster Blade Monster Protection to the Graveyard. Oh, this is the, this is the Fusion. Not even just the Fusion card, it summons any Buster Dragon for your... Oh no, one Buster Dragon for your extra deck, but destroy it during the... I see, okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it. Alright, we're negating the El Shadal fusion. And then, wait, what does this one do? Special summon... Oh, so we can summon the fusion monster too? <gasps> Whoa, that's wild. Oh my god, I didn't realize both were coming out. Buster Blader, the destruction dragon... Dragon Destroyer Swordsman. And then, yeah, there's the Buster Dragon. So now, now, not only do we have, as I mentioned before, two Omni Negates, no searching, uh, target protection on one of the Omnis and the no searching. Now, all their monsters are dragons, and we can, yeah, change their monsters to defense mode, and they can't activate their effects. That is ridiculous. Wow, that's actually insane. <gasps> Oh, and then we also have the extra tech lock, too. <laughs> That's disgusting. <clears throat> wow. So, yeah, if you're looking for a deck to facilitate a very gross end board, apparently Armed Dragon Buster Blader is the way to go. Adelon, thank you so much for submitting that very cool d game there. Oh, my God, that duel featured... Uh, a very insane turn one end board. Yeah, that's two Omnis, no searching. All your stuff goes to defense mode. They can't activate their effects, and you can't summon from the extra deck. That's everything that was locking the opponent down. Whew. Uh, let's, uh, whew. Yeah, let's go ahead and see the next one there. Oh, my goodness. Okay, our next game comes to us from Sephiroth himself. Oh, my God. <laughs> Those of you who are watching that Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, streams slash VODs are definitely aware of how scary Sephiroth can be. But anyway, um, looks like we have a game where we're playing Vanquish Soul against Labyrinth. So definitely eager to show off some Vanquish Soul gameplay as this is one of the more meta-relevant decks that I actually just do not have built myself. Mostly, honestly, due to how expensive the deck is. When I pulled from this pack, I... Pulled exactly one Caesar Valius and no other Vanquish Soul cards. And that leaves me with, like, what? I think 13, 12 or 13 more URs to craft, counting the, the There Can Be Only ones. So, yeah, that's a little bit of a much, a little bit much of an ask, honestly, for me. But. And if it were, I don't know, I'm not saying Vanquish Soul is, like, a deck I hate or anything, but it's not a playstyle that I don't think necessarily super appeals to me. Like,. It's not an, a... I'm not, like, super excited at the thought of playing it, right? Not again, 
again, rather, not that I hate the deck or anything, it's just, it isn't, uh, you know, I've, this is a general life thing, I'm of the mindset that if you're gonna do something, it should be an excited yes, it shouldn't just be like a, sure, it should be like a, you should be excited to do things in life, right? I think it's just a good way to live, personally, so, you know, when I think about Vanquish Soul, I'm like, yeah, maybe I could try them, but I'm not like, hell yeah, we have to try them. Also, our lab opponent is on Archfiend, which sets up specifically trap cards that activate in response to attacks, like Storming Mirror Force, so that'll be interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been talking a lot today, so my throat is very, very scraggly. Let me take a sip of water. It's because I'm coming hot off the tier list video where I talked for like an hour straight. Alright, Caesar Valley is hitting the board now, moving to the end phase, so passing back over to our opponent here. Yeah, I don't want to attack into that Storming Mirror Force, so... Okay, Welcome Lab is going to end up being their other back row. We don't have the other Ash Blossom this time, but we do have the uh, Snow Devil, as well as the Counter Trap. Interesting that we didn't use the Counter Trap on the Welcome Lab there. We're using it on the Lovely Lady. Or lovely lab. I always call I call both of them lovely lady because it's lovely labyrinth and lady labyrinth And I'm just like oh the lovely lady. Although to be fair. Yeah, it looks like we can just like Raigeki our opponent's board with the snow devil here So I guess we don't really even need the counter trap at this point, right? Welcome lab does get to set itself back up. Oh They have the Ariane. Wow our opponents on like pure lab here. They're playing like every lab card. That was all during the draw phase, too. Monster Reborn. Okay. That's very irregular. It's like we're popping the Ariane here. Monster Reborn bringing back, of course, Lovely Labyrinth. Caesar Valley is going to reveal the three in our hand to pop a card. There goes the Lovely once again. We're normal summoning Shane Dragalier and then passing, so. Yeah, this is very capable of destroying the Storming Mirror Force, which we know to be this one, I believe. Yeah, this is Welcome Lab, yep. Uh, Reason activating to pop the Dragalier. Looks like we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of the Mirror Force now. It is a good idea to do this now because we. Ooh, and we get to call by the Lovely, too. That's, that's good. Yeah, good to do this now because we don't want the field spell to pop like the Caesar Valley, so then we don't get a chance to pop the Mirror Force. Yeah. Definitely makes sense there. Also, the Vanquish Soul and Lab matchup just seems pretty interesting overall because it's a. Uh, well, it's not a direct mirror, it is a control mirror. Both decks generally aim to win the same way over the course of a slightly longer duel by outpacing the opponent through advantage, so. It's an interesting matchup to say the least. Alright, Raisin getting linked off for Rock of the Vanquisher here. Rock is going to get to activate Special Summoning, or no, not Special Summoning, adding. We're adding the Raisin, and then we're Normal Summoning it, I see. For another Dr. Mad Love, Caesar Valley is bouncing the Raisin to summon itself. We only have Fires and Darks now. We've already used Caesar Valley's effect this turn anyway. And then next turn we can just use Rock to bounce back the Caesar Valley's in our yard, or the Pantera, for that Earth, so... This is during the main phase, right? Yes, during the main phase, okay. Gonna try to surge, welcome lab coming up. We're still sitting on this counter trap. We haven't had to use it the whole game, which is honestly pretty wild. Very patient with that counter trap. I, I would have fired this off a long time ago, so. I'm, I'm just like reading over to make sure we can use it, yeah, so. Definite, definite props to Sephiroth again for just being so patient with the counter trap. Because, like, as you can see, our opponent has been well... What is this? What what actually is this? Terrifying Toddler of Torment. Okay. Lab opponent on a, a lot of irregular attack here. And, yeah, I don't know if they didn't know, but, yeah, two zero attack monsters actually do not collide. I think we've even seen this come up in other um, viewer specials, right? Hey, viewer special, that's also VS, how about that? But, 
Yeah, when two monsters have zero attack points and they collide, unlike when other monsters both have the same amount of attack points, they don't actually destroy each other because they have zero attack points. It's kind of one of those rules that... It's... It's kind of a rule that is the case just because it is, but it's also intuitive enough, I think, that it just makes sense, right? Because, like, this isn't Magic the Gathering where monsters actually do deal damage to each other, but you can still kind of think of it that way when two zero attack mode monsters, zero attack attack mode monsters battle each other. But again, that's, that's not how it works in Yu-Gi-Oh! In Magic it is. In Magic, monsters inflict damage to each other. Battle damage is not inflicted to monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's only inflicted to the player. But, anyway. Just rules, fun facts. Archfiend's Ghastly Glitch. And they put it they put it in the Imperm column. Not that I, I don't think that matters. I don't think they're going to activate this turn anyway. I just thought that was kind of funny. Also kind of funny that our opponent is like, I mean, we're still at 8k here. Like, we still have not lost any amount of life points. So, I mean, our opponent has the advantage right now, but... When it comes to life, we've definitely been able to grind them out. And Vanquished Soul does notably have a good amount of burn. Oh, is this a uh, Chaos Angel? I tried to figure out for like half a second what was a tuner, and then I realized, oh, duh. All right, there we go. That's gonna be the end of the game right there. Beautiful. Oh, we burned with the counter trap. <laughs> we saved it and burned them at the very end. That's that's great. That's excellent stuff. Whew, that was a great duel. Thank you very much, Sephiroth, for sharing that one. We do have one last game to take a look at, so let's go straight into it here. Okay, our last game comes to us from Toadette. Toad, if you've been on the, the streams, the Discord, we all know Toad. Toad's a regular. We all love Toad. Um, we're going to see a game here against Avian Flu. Wonder what they're up to. But um, we're playing Goaty, uh, which Toad said... Hang on, let me actually pull up the, uh, <laughs> the post in the Discord here. Uh, do I have to scroll up for it or was it down? Oh, here we go. Peddling Goaty propaganda because we still haven't seen a Goaty deck on the channel yet. Have I not featured Goaty in a, in a viewer special before? I thought I had, but maybe not. Didn't know the Goaty... The, I, I don't know the Goaty versus Flu matchup. This is what Toad says. Toadette says, I don't know the Goaty versus Flu matchup. It's probably pretty bad since our main interaction is banishing cards. Guess one of the few archetypes has on either cards being banished, so that hurts how rooted cards can help mitigate with some control. Pretty good back and forth. Turn one's gonna be a pretty good end board. Access to level 8 Synchro Fish. But things get a little bit more dicey when they get to their turn, as we'll see here in a moment. So. Yeah, it's funny, Goaty turn ones never look like much, but of course the thing about Goaty is that they tend to do most, if not all, of their big stuff on the opponent's turn. So. Ooh, they found in evenly with the duality. And now they're going to jack in the hand reveal token, Eaglin, and Rabina. We're taking token. That's funny, I usually take Rabina because I'm like, there's this but there's this part of the, the back of my brain that's like, what if they actually just need the Rabina? Like, I know a lot of the time they're probably using jack in the hand to get token, but there's just this part of my brain that's like, yeah, because they usually have map or something like that anyway, but I'm like, what if they really just, you're using this to try to get Rabina? Like, what if they truly do not have plays without Rabina, so. Also interesting that Rabina is a 2.99. That means there are flu decks out there that are playing two Rabinas, which is very interesting. But anyway. All right, looks like they're so far getting to go off pretty much uninterrupted. I like that we're holding off the Ash Blossom here because I think I would save it for the yeah, the Eagle and exactly. If you've only got one Ash Blossom and they've got... Oh, they have the Call by. That's brutal. If you've only got the one Ash Blossom slash Imperm and they have a setup like this where they have, like, the map and stuff, I definitely agree that you should negate the Eaglin because that's what's going to get them to all their big scary stuff, right? Like M-Pen, like Ryza, like uh, Apex Avian. Or not Apex Avian. Yeah, Apex Avian. So. But no, here they are able to get the Ryza. Looks like they're putting back all of our stuff. Uh, we do have the Golden Droplet here, so I think we get to add back the Fountain. Yeah, because 
or summoning Hugin here. Of course, we can't activate it right away, but that's fine. That's not that. Not that big of a deal. I mean, it is kind of a big deal. We're going to miss out on draws, of course, and our board has been cleared, but... Yeah, we get to pitch the extra Ash Blossom, get our, get our Fountain back. We still have the Destruction, so we can still potentially proc it. All right, Avian Flu setting two, passing back to Toad. We got the Freezing Curses. We're definitely getting a yes start by dropping the Fountain here. Destruction on their field spell. Banishing, was that uh, was that a statue in 2D Shifter? It was, it was a water statue in 2D Shifter. Wow, that's gross. All right, Rabina for Eaglin. I guess that was Dreaming Town that activated? Yeah, of course. Uh, of course it was, so I'm guessing that this is M-Pen coming down. Maxi, very sad. Very sad to see that, but, you know, it is what it is. We do have the Freezing Curses here. Again, it's a good thing we got that, so... And again, targeting the Eaglin makes a lot of sense, because that's what's going to get all the scary stuff, so... We'll just stop that search and summon there. Now we can go for the Lifeless Leaf Fish. They're going to Rivalry... Okay. 100% <laughs> fine. I'm pretty sure we don't play... I mean, I'm sure we do in the extra deck. I mean, we are on Runic and stuff, but... We can definitely play with only fishes, right? And fishes is the proper plural here. Fun fact, for those who don't know, when to use fish versus when to use fishes as a plural. If it is a group of all of the same kind of fish, it is a school of fish. But if you're like looking at an aquarium, there's a bunch of different kinds of fishes, then it's fishes. Again, fun, mostly useless fact there. <laughs> I'm an English nerd, so I, I'm, I'm amused by grammar stuff like that. But anyway. Fishes actually used to annoy me because for a long time I thought it was wrong. But no, there is actually an apple, uh, like a, a situation where you use fishes. But anyway, back to the duel. We have M Pen coming down. Mm, Penguin's notable fish eaters. Definitely a little bit scary here, but we do have the. I can never say this card's name. Is it Snopius? I always think the I is an L. I want to call it Snopless or something, but it's Snopius. Snopius? Snopus? Snopius? We got the level 6 octopus looking one. It's a good card. It's actually a really good card. Um, when I play against... Whenever I do play against Goaty, which isn't very often. Not as often as when like, the deck first came out, but... This is the card you never want to see him have, because then you know they're going to have like some some shenanigans. Like, some amount of plays. Okay, Advent of Adventure grabbing the Robina here. Have they not normal summoned yet? Well, they have the... Oh, no, they don't have the map. That's right. We got rid of it. Ooh! The White or Whale! This is really easy to forget about, that, that this deck has access to this, but... Yeah, they can not only banish the whole field with a level 10, but they can also board wipe attack mode monsters with a level 8, so... Gotta keep that in mind when you're playing against the, the fish. The fishes. Excuse me. <laughs> My opponent's at, what, 8,500? I'm trying to think. Well, I don't know. I'm trying to think, like, as if I would know if we have lethal or not. I don't know this deck's plays, so... I'm mostly just along for the ride at this point. Oh, how many banished cards are there? Oh, we're making Baron. Because I was going to say, the, the big fish gains 500 times the number of banished monsters. There's a lot of banished monsters. Wait, is there 16? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, our battle phase was skipped. Wait, was it only skipped because we activated something? 1, 2, wait, how many did I say? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. No, not enough. We need, well, there are 85. We need 17 monsters to be banished for the level 10 Goaty to be big enough. We're allowing the evenly. I love it. Because we already have the Veiler in hand, too. Just holding that Baron negate. 
All right, there is the advent of adventure. <coughs> Which this does allow the Rabina to resolve, but at the same time, it's like... Yeah, what else can you really do here? Another maxi. It's funny. Just gonna set it, battle, and pass. I mean, what else are you gonna do with Maxi in this matchup? Like, at all, really. Normal Eaglin. Oh, it's gonna proc Rabina in the street. And then they concede. Are we out of stuff? Oh, we must be out of just, like, stuff, right? Because everything's in the yard. Rises in the yard, M pens in the yard. Did they use Apex Avian at all? I don't even remember seeing it. But I don't know. I mean, it gets a Baron. Apex Avian only has 2,800 attack, right? That's, like, not enough. Baron could just battle over it. So, yeah, maybe they just were out of outs. I don't know. But uh, in any case, that was an excellent showing of Goaty. Thank you very much, <coughs> excuse me, Toad, for bringing that list to us for this viewer special. And that will go ahead and do it for this one. So thank you all for watching, and thanks to everyone who submitted duels. And, again, uh, if you were not featured this episode, one, I probably very likely watched your duel, and two, there is always the next week. But for now, let's go ahead and move on to our outro. Alright everybody, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching it all the way to the very end. That means a whole lot to me, and it's also a fantastic way to support the channel. And if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways besides YouTube, there are plenty of ways to do that. If you check out the description below, you'll find a bunch of links down there. One of them goes to my Patreon. You're actually seeing the names of everyone subscribed to the Patreon on the screen right now. So if you're interested in getting your name in the credits here at the end, if you want to see more daily Master Duel content, or if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one private coaching sessions, I offer all of that on Patreon. I also stream live on Twitch. Feel free to go ahead and click that link and follow and or subscribe there. I also have the Discord community if you want to follow that link where hundreds of duelists have already signed up. Free to join and you can just come hang out, talk about the game, and chill in general. The final link that's going to be in the description is my Twitter. You can follow that if you want some more notifications of what's happening with the channel. So all in all, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.